Hello and thank you for joining me for another video from Berkshire Guitar Amplifier Repairs in Reading, England. On the bench today we have a Trainer YCV40, not an amplifier I've seen before, and this one has the problem of the standby switch doesn't work. The amp is working fine, so in other words it's out of standby, it's just when you turn it into standby it doesn't go into standby. I've done a little bit of research on this, apparently it's a well-known problem. They don't use a toggle standby switch, I don't know why, they use a little, little push button switch and that obviously doesn't interrupt the HT directly, it does it via some sort of uh, transistor, some sort of FET or something in the circuit and um, that probably has failed. I've never had one of these, I've never taken one apart, I don't know where the FET is located, so um, I'm new to this just like you are watching this. So what we'll do is we'll just confirm that the customer is correct, I'm sure he is, and then we'll whip the chassis out and see if we can locate this FET. The um, field effect transistor, it's just a switch really. Um, I could probably show you just quickly on a piece of paper, let me just sketch something for you. A bit of a weird way of doing things, but let me just show you this. So basically there's just a transistor in the circuit there, field effect transistor, and the HT comes in and goes off out to the amplifier, uh, but only when there's a control voltage on this terminal here. So if the control voltage is present, the FET is effectively short circuit and the HT goes through to the um, amplifier. And when you ground this terminal, the switch is open circuit so the HT can't get through to the amplifier. That's how it works. Now, of course, if the FET is blown, which I suspect it is, this will be just a short circuit regardless of what you put on this control voltage here. So I'm suspecting it's just a short circuit FET. Right, well, let's have a look, make sure it is doing what the customer says, and then we can get down to fixing it. OK, here's the amp top side. I'm um, looking pretty dirty. I'll have to clean this up. I've got a guitar plugged in. As you can hear, the amp is working OK. And here's the standby switch, it's just a little push button switch. I notice when I push it, the light changes. So obviously the switch is working. I suspect one pair of contacts of the switch are just being used to change the colour of this LED. And the other pair is being used to send the voltage off to the field effect transistor. But I'll strum the guitar. And you can see that's not doing anything at all. So that's what's happening there. Another thing I've noticed, I'm going to spin the amp round. It sounds quite good, but it's rather amazing it does sound good, because if you look in the back here, let's see if I can turn this around a bit. There we go. So have a look in there. You see that milky whiteness on that valve there? If ever you see that on a valve, it means the valve has lost vacuum and is not working. So this amp is working on just one valve and uh, I'm surprised it sounds as clean as it does. Normally it would sound um, a little bit distorted because only one half of the push-pull is working. So this is going to need a new pair of valves as well. Anyway, let's get the chassis out up on the bench and see if we can find out where this switching transistor is inside this amp. OK, chassis came out like a dream, no problems whatsoever. There's the milky whiteness on the valve, which shows the vacuum's gone. I'll pull that valve in a minute and have a look, and I might be able to show you where it's actually cracked. But sometimes the, the crack is so small you can't see. Anyway, that valve was definitely shot. Bit of a weird chassis, this. I've never seen anything like this before. Looks like I have to take out all of these um, screws all the way around the periphery here. All of this lot here in order to get this, this top plate off by the looks of it. Yeah, never seen one of these before. Don't like it very much, but anyway, I'll push on and remove all those screws and uh, hopefully I'll report back being able to get inside the chassis. Well, actually, that wasn't too bad. There were a mere 12 screws holding that plate on, but when I took them out, the plate just came off beautifully. Uh, there's the inside, here's the preamp valves and I went to take this valve out to see if I could discover the hairline crack and um, when I went to pull it out ooh, I think I, I think I might have discovered a hairline crack in this valve yes definitely slight crack there allowing 
the air to leak in. So that shot, that's got a new one in there. Right, I'm not going to bother about that valve at the moment. I want to see if I can find this uh, field effect transistor. Immediately I'm sort of horrified because as you can see what we're looking at here is the underside of a printed circuit board, a huge long printed circuit board. You know, if the, if the FET's on here somewhere, the entire board has to come out. Um, it could be on this board here. We have, interesting, we have two two power transistors there. Not quite sure what they're doing. Hmm, interesting. I might have to resort. Oh, that's an, that's an interesting looking possibility, that one there. I would go for something like, like that. I'll tell you why I think it might be that. I haven't even looked at it to see what... what type of transistor it is. But you see, look, here's the here's the input from the mains transformer. Here are the four HT rectifier diodes, which are producing the HT. Here are the HT smoothing capacitors. You know, they'll be 16 microfarads at 350 volts or whatever. And right after it is, you know, an FET which switches the HT off to the rest of the circuit. I'm only, I'm only guessing. I really, I don't know that, but that would be my guess. So what I will probably do is um, see if I can see, bend this over a little bit and see if I can see what type of transistor it is. And if it is a, a FET, I think that'll be the, the culprit. But of course, you know, again, look at this, this is not easy. You have this whole board here. Um, somehow you have to get that out. These are, yeah, these are bolted down to a heat sink. You know, it's just not easy just to simply change uh, something like that. It's a five minute job if you've got the board out, but if you have to start messing around getting this board um, out, then, then the time can really add up. Anyway, I will have a look at that FET, uh, sorry, the number on that, and see if it is indeed a, a high voltage power FET. And if it is, I will measure across it, see if I can get on the pins. Not sure I can get on the pins, that's annoying. To see if there's a short circuit there. Anyway, enough of my waffling. Let me do a few more things and get back to you. Well, I've done a bit of research on the net and managed to get this schematic, which is useful. And this whole HT power-up circuit is a nightmare. I mean, God knows why they've designed it like this. It involves this power FET, this transistor, all these Zener diodes, 50 volt Zener diodes, and this opto isolator. In fact, this whole chunk of circuitry here is involved just with switching the HT off and on. A common problem apparently is that the FETs do, do go short circuit. I've measured it um, across there, and it's not short circuit, it's about 50 ohms, which is a bit of a kind of a weird, you know, I'd expect it to be short circuit or nothing really, so that's a bit odd. I've got the voltmeter connected up here and you'll notice if I go on one side let me just get the probe on there one side of the FET we've got 440 volts the other side of the FET we've got 440 volts so obviously the FET is kind of on that's why obviously it's in standby or out of standby all the time and on the middle leg we've got 440 volts as well so I've no idea what's going on here really I think I'm going to have to take a view on this because to change the FET is quite a mission and it's going to run up a little bit of a bill. I want to see how keen the customer is to get this fault solved. Bottom line, are they willing to pay for it or should they just leave the amp without a standby um, option? So I'll give him a call now and get back to you and let you know what he says. OK, I've had another look at the schematic and basically there's no real way that you can have 45 ohms between this pin and this pin uh, without this device being not quite short circuit. So I, I think this is probably gone. I've had a word with a client and he's not willing to pay the amount of money which it would cost to repair this because basically the amp's working and um, you don't really need a standby switch. You can just turn the amp off or just turn the volume down. But I did happen to notice in my uh, spares box I've got a um, STK830. This is an IRS830, IRF I beg your pardon, um, International Rectifier 830. 
power end channel MOSFET high voltage 500 volts so is this they're identical different manufacturers so I think what I will do kind of at my own expense really is just to clip these leads very carefully off here cut through them bend them back and then just tack this this one in temporarily and see if it all springs to life if it does I might have a think about possibly changing it or seeing seeing this isn't the uh, metal tab version this has got a metal tab so I think I'd probably like to get the proper one and um, yeah I might I might put it in depends how hard this board is to get out uh, and if that doesn't work I'll just kind of solder these back together and uh, leave well enough alone so I will do that I'm knocking off for the evening now I'll probably do that tomorrow and uh, you can join me then when I've tacked this in and we can see if the thing springs to life or not. Okay, it's the following morning and I've had a few hours sleep, which is good. And I've woken up refreshed and ready to have another little go at this. So you can see I've cut the three legs off there. And I'm going to try and tack this um, FET here, which I pulled out of an old Black Star amp. Uh, onto there, maybe with some bits of wire. I just want to see basically does this do the trick? If it does, we can work out how we're going to fix this permanently. If that doesn't do the trick, I'll just resolder those three there and we'll call it a day. Um, the customer doesn't want to spend a lot of money to get the standby switch working. But I thought I'd have a little go just for my interest and for your interest in case you have this problem. If we can narrow it down to this FET, then at least you'll know that that's more likely what's wrong with your amp. Okay, so I'll just tack some bits of wire on there and tack this FET on there and then we'll see if it works, I think. Right, I hope you like my ultra high-tech mod here. Um, three wires going down to the old clipped off tags of the FET there. The ones that go to the board, of course. And then I've just tacked in this FET there. Um, I haven't switched it on yet, I thought it would be fun to switch it on if it blows up on live on camera that would be good, always good for viewing, so I'll just turn on ok, no nasty bangs I'm not sure if it's in standby or whether it's in ordinary I notice I haven't got the guitar plugged in so I'm just going to turn the camera off a second and plug the guitar in and there's no valves of course either so we can't test whether the standby is working. Let me just pop a couple of valves in there and uh, also the guitar. So I'm going to turn on now. Okay, nothing dramatic happened. I've got the guitar plugged in. Let's see if I can see any lights on valves. Yes, I can see the valves glowing, so we have power. Let's leave it a little while. I don't know whether it's in standby or not at the moment. It's got that funny little push toggle switch. Uh, not toggle switch, just a little push button switch. You can't really tell which mode it's in. So that should be warm enough now if it is in standby. I'll just give the guitar a strum. Nothing there. OK, I'll try pressing the standby switch, which is kind of underneath here, underneath where I've got the camera now. Where is it there? I'm just feeling it. There we go. Press that. OK. Oh, I know. I haven't got a speaker connected. That always helps. Let me just quickly connect a speaker. OK, here we go. Speaker going in. All right, so there we have volume. I can hear that quite well. I expect you can too. Now let's see if pressing the standby button, I'm going to go under here and press the standby button, see if that works. Where are we? No. So I've just pressed that and nothing's happened at all. Okay, I'm going to turn off. <clears throat> Bit of a funny noise come out of it too, I don't like that. Well, this, this FET's quite warm, so that was passing current, so my guess is that uh, something else has gone wrong with the circuitry. This whole of this area here is to do with just 
the standby going off and on. Absolutely ridiculous. So we ha we gave it a go. The FET is passing current, but I don't know why it's not going in and out of standby. So basically, because the customer doesn't want to spend any more money on this, we'll call it a day. I'll reinstate those legs of the FET, and then we'll just uh, give up on this, and um, the thing will be permanently on. Okay, I've um, resoldered those legs back on. I've just turned it back on and hopefully it will come to life. Yes, I can hear it coming up in the background. Quick guitar strum. Okay, that's all right. I was a little bit surprised that I didn't fix it because when I measured with that FET tacked on, when I measured the legs, it wasn't that low resistance, that 40 ohms. It was a perfectly high resistance, so I thought that might have done it. Also, the FET was getting slightly warm, which means it was passing current. Um, obviously it's taken out some other components in this whole section here and it, of course anything's repairable I'd have to completely rebuild this entire section and um, you know, take the board out and do all that and anything's repairable it's just time and time equals money and on an amplifier like this do you want to be spending 150 pounds to get the standby switch working and the answer is no because you wouldn't get 150 quid for the amp on eBay so I'm constantly having to take decisions like that and to check with the customer. Anyway, the amp works perfectly okay, okay, and who cares if there's no standby switch? You can just turn the volume down or turn it off at the mains. I'm gonna pop a bias probe on these power tubes just to check the bias is okay, but as far as I'm concerned, that's uh, job done. Not, not a very successful video, I think you'll agree. I think you would have liked to have seen me repair this so that if you have the problem, you can fix it. But at least we've honed down to the area here. Apparently this FET does go, and the existing one has gone. So changing that might do it for you. If not, you're going to have to get very involved in all this circuitry here. To be honest with you, I looked at the schematic, and uh, it's not very clear how it works. And as you can probably guess, I'm quite good at reading schematics. It was very opaque about what's going on, on here. Um, bonkers, bonkers system, you've got this, all this real estate here handling the standby switch. What's wrong with putting a, an ordinary toggle switch up there? No idea. Anyway, there you go. Uh, I'll call it a wrap on this and uh, thanks for watching the video and I'll catch you on another hopefully more successful fix.